Hey everybody and welcome back to the Rails Coach Podcast. This is your host, Charles Max Wood, and this week I'm going to be talking about before, after, and around filters. Um, basically, the idea behind before, after, and around filters are that you can, you can manage the flow through your controllers with them. Um, let me just kind of jump in and talk about them each separately. Uh, the reason that I'm going to be that I would do this is mainly because I mean the idea you kind of get the idea of what a filter is but before after and around filters have different uses and uh, generally belong in different uh, areas so let's let's talk about before filters since they seem to be the most common ones um, basically before filters are well usually what you see them used for are things like uh, validating user authentication you know so before the user gets sent to the controller action, um, it checks and makes sure that they're logged in and can access that um, that resource. Oh, sorry about that. I, I'm really plugged up today. Anyway, um, basically the way that they work is the before filters get run before the controller's action. Now they are part of the controller and they usually run a method on the controller. So you, you, you really can't think of them as kind of a separate entity. They are, they are actually there on the controller and part of it. Um, if, the, if the before filter returns a response, then it actually stops the, the process chain and uses that response and doesn't actually fall through to the action. So that's why it's so handy for things like authentication. Um, I've also seen it used for other things such as... Um, uh, preloading a resource from the database. So, for example, if you have a blog, and you know each each method on the controller or most of the methods on the controller need to load a a post, then you may see a before filter that's called load post, and it'll actually do the query on the database and find the post and load it up so that then each of the methods there can go ahead and do whatever it is that they do with that post. Um, one other thing that I've seen done is that it'll check permissions on the resource. So that's usually done in tandem with loading the resource. So for example, if you have the post and you need certain permissions to access it, you know, more than just having been authenticated, then it'll load up the post and then it'll query the permissions with the logged in user and see if that user has permissions. And that's usually done in in a before filter and then if they don't have permissions then it redirects them or whatever um, it, it can also do redirects under other circumstances I've also seen before filters used to uh, to load uh, resource or load values into and out of cookies and sessions and things like that so th those are just some examples of, of what before filters do so basically you know, it, it does a lot of the upfront processing that you need to do over when, when basically when running any of a, a specific set of actions. If it's something that only has to happen once for one action, before filters don't make a lot of sense. You just put it in the action. Um, but uh, most of these filters are used when you have um, behavior that needs to run over a set of, of actions. So then you have after filters, and after filters run after the action completes. So obviously they can't stop the action from running like a before filter can. Um, they can, however, read and modify the response that's being sent back by the action. So basically the idea there is um, <clears throat> it can do logging. You can modify the response if you need to. Um, I really haven't used after filters much at all, and, and really it's because generally... By the time I get to the action, most of the stuff I need done, I can just do it in the action. And there generally aren't specific modifications that I need to run across the entire um, set of actions. So I, I typically don't use them. However, I have seen them used mainly for logging. So as the response comes back, then certain things with the response get logged. Um, and that that's about it. For after filters. Now around filters are a little bit different um, because they're set up so that you can have logic before and after the action is being run. And basically the way it works, if you're familiar with blocks and yielding in Ruby, 
is that the around filter actually yields control to the action and then the actions run and then you know obviously control comes back to the around filter so it can do whatever it has to do afterward and there are certain use cases that require that you put code before and after for example for example you can have a a begin rescue end so <clears throat> basically uh, to catch um, exceptions and handle them in whatever way you're expecting to and I've seen it used for that I've also seen it used to set up data and then tear it down when it's done and in this case you could actually probably just do a, a before filter and an after filter but an around filter makes a lot of sense there and uh, I've seen it for benchmarking as well and uh, finally, you know, there are a lot of other use cases that, that you can come up with for around filters. But that's that's the basic premise for um, filters in your controllers. So, um, you know, definitely you'll look into using them. There is a uh, section on them in the Rails guides that I'll put a link to in the show notes. I'm sorry about that. I hate sniffing in the, the microphone. Anyway. Um, if you have any questions, you can call me at 801-367-6164, or if you have specific um, uh, applications you need built. Um, I actually picked up a contract that's like a three-day contract, basically. Um, you know, it's just enough work to keep me extra busy for, for a few days, and uh, I'm happy to do those, you know, put, put the work in and uh, help out with them. You can email me, chuck at teachmetocode.com. You can also find the tutorials that I've been putting together over at teachmetocode.com. And, uh, you know, go check out Ruby Rogues as well. We talk a lot about a, a lot about stuff that um, that is relevant to Rails and Rails development. So, uh, you know, go check that out as well. And finally, you can get the show notes at railscoach.com. And uh, that's it. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next week.